There, there are several stories like that. Have you ever heard of Maher Arar? No. Also Canadian? So Maher Arar was, uh, uh, is a political science professor at the University of Toronto. And um, he's ethnically Tunisian. He's a naturalized Canadian citizen. And he's been a political science professor for a long time. So he went in 2001, he went to Tunisia to visit some cousins of his. And a woman that I was working for at the time said, this guy is a bad guy, Maher Arar. We even had staff meetings about him. And there were several of us, there were three of us, I was one of the three, who said, uh-uh, you guys don't speak Arabic. That's what the problem is. There's a bad guy who has a name that sounds like Maher Arar, but it's not Maher Arar. This guy is a friggin' political science professor. <laughs> she says, grab him. So we asked the FBI to grab him at Kennedy Airport when he flew back from Tunisia. The FBI grabs him. They turn him over to the CIA. The CIA t turns him over to Syrian intelligence, right? Syrian intelligence. They tortured this guy mercilessly for 10 months. They gave him electroshock to his balls. They pulled his fingernails out. They raped him. They did, uh, what do you call it, uh, sleep deprivation. They made him a, a whimpering mush of a man. And then the Syrians came back to us and they said, listen, we think this is the wrong guy. This guy doesn't know anything. We broke him. And so we said, uh, let him go. In the meantime, his wife is waiting for him at the airport in Toronto. He was supposed to get off the plane at Kennedy and get a connection to Toronto. He never gets on the plane or gets off the plane. So his wife asks, you know, what's up? And, um, and the FAA said, oh, no, he never got on the plane in, uh, in Tunisia. But then a month later, she gets a credit card bill. And here he had bought her a pair of sunglasses on the duty-free on the plane. And she said, look, I have proof he was on the plane. He bought a pair of sunglasses from the duty-free. And they were like, uh, yeah, we, we, we don't know what's going on. Sorry. So finally he was released. And he's like, they snatched me off the plane with these FBI badges, then the CIA took me, then the Syrians tortured me for the last 10 months. He filed a, a $20 million lawsuit against the U.S. government. Filed it in the Eastern District of Virginia, in Alexandria. And the CIA goes to the Eastern District uh, Court, and they said, uh, National Security, Your Honor, we can't talk about any of this. Sources and methods. And the judge is like, case dismissed. So, wow. Uh huh. So, so nothing happened. He sued the Canadian government because we informed the Canadians you have an Al Qaeda guy working at the University of Toronto. And he wasn't. So the Canadians gave him $6 million. But the last time I spoke to him, he told me that he has not left his house in 14 years. He has such terrible anxiety disorder now and agoraphobia that he has not left the four walls of his house in 14 years. Good fucking Lord, that's crazy. <sighs> yeah. If, Do you, if you don't mind, I'll tell you about another one. There's a guy named Khalid al-Masri. Um, the name al-Masri means the Egyptian. It's not even really a name. It's just this guy goes by Khalid. His name's Khalid al-Masri. He, um, uh, he owned a little grocery store in Berlin. And he got in a fight with his wife one night. And their marriage was lousy, and he just decided, I'm out of here. And so he gets on a bus to go to Macedonia to visit his brother. He just needs to get away from his wife. In the meantime, there's this guy named Khaled, who's Egyptian. So his, he would be Khaled al-Masri, right? And he's on the phone saying, hey... I want to blow up the American embassy in Albania. So we get a tip that there's this guy, Khaled al-Masri, 
who wants to blow up the American embassy. And there's this guy, Khaled al-Masri, who's on a bus on the way to, uh, to Macedonia. We send in this team with a helicopter coming down, and they stop the bus, and they snatch him off the bus. And they send him to Egypt. And we tell the Egyptians, soften him up a little bit. Tell us what the plans are to blow up our embassy in Albania. He didn't know what the fuck we were talking about. So he's there for a year. Same thing with him. They electrocute him. They beat him. They rape him. They pull his fingernails out. And then they come back to us and they're like, you know, there are like 50 million people named Khaled al Masri. This is not the guy you're looking for. And they release him. But when he comes out of Egypt, he's got a beard down to his waist. He's holding a copy of the Quran. And he told a reporter all he wants to do now is kill Americans. Because that's what we did to him. Right. We do this kind of thing all the time. Well, didn't we sort of create bin Laden's ideology against America? I'm glad that you put it that way. The answer to that question is yes, we did. We didn't create bin Laden. There's this, there's this misconception that bin Laden was um, one of the Afghan mujahideen that we had funded during the war against the Soviets. Right. He wasn't. He didn't arrive in... Um, in Afghanistan until after the Soviets had departed. But in terms of that ideology, absolutely, yes, we created that group. What we did is we had such an obsession with communism well into the late 80s that it was, you know, the policy was to defeat the Russians at all costs. Right. And one of the things that we did to defeat the Russians was to provide Stinger missiles to the Afghan Mujahideen. And it was the missile that, that turned the war around. Because all of a sudden, you know, from a shoulder launcher, you can take down a Russian plane, a Russian helicopter. We just decimated the Russian military that way. And what we did is we, we radicalized these guys. Mm -hmm. And then the Russians are gone. And they're still radical. And then what do we do? Then we have September 11th. Right. Jesus. Um, do you think... That, I mean, obviously, I know your stance on, you know, all of these crazy, these fucking torture techniques that we used to use, like waterboarding and, mm -hmm. and all of these things. But do you think that waterboarding has ever been an effective technique? No. Never. 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 It's meant to punish, not, not to collect information. Mm -hmm.